Hello, what's up? What's up, everybody? We're back. This is our second live broadcast. I just want to make sure that if you're on, you give me a thumbs up or something. Let me know when you're from your comments uh, if you can actually hear me. Uh, I'm just trusting that you can. I got my little Lucy here. She's uh, she's the one that really wanted me to share this with you. Based on a few client calls that I've been having, this topic is extremely important. And I wanted to share this with you. If you're watching on replay, please pay attention. Please um, tag somebody, share this with somebody, share this Facebook Live with somebody that you know who's dealing with a health issue. Can you hear me first of all? I had some tech issues. Do I, I get a thumbs up? Can I get a comment if I can hear? If you can, if you can hear me okay. Lucy wants to know if, if you can hear. Hey, hey, good morning. Well, afternoon here, Diani. It's it's uh, morning over there in Australia. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can actually hear me. Um, I want to see if, yes, okay, perfect. So it's working. Thank you. We're talking about one of the most important issues that uh, have been creeping up over and over again with the clients that I've been seeing. And I wanted to, to share this with you, to serve you in, 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 in a way where if you might be having some health problems, you might be having anxiety, you might be having depression, <coughs> translated into digestive and hormonal issues, you're going from one doctor to another, and um, it's it's frustrating because you're taking one pill, one trying to find a solution to solve this health problem. I've been having a string of clients who've been coming in with anxiety and digestive issues, one on top of another, and um, the work that I do really helps to serve to peel back the layers of the stories that we tell that are contributing to the ineffective ways of being in our lives, which include our health, which include our fulfillment, which include our finances. Um, everything has to do with the state of uh, how we're being in our lives. And, and I want to talk about this very sensitive topic because if you've been in a relationship or you've lived to be you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, you've dealt with this concept of infidelity. I know I have. I mean, I haven't been a Boy Scout all my life. I've been married. I've been divorced. I'm lucky, blessed to be able to still say that I'm good friends with my ex-wife. And if she were to come in to this town, she comes in and gets adjusted. I take care of her. We're good friends. And, and there's a deep, deep amount of love and appreciation. And we're rooting for each other with our careers. And uh, she's doing, she's up to great things uh, living in Australia. Um, but I've been in situations where after I was divorced, and, uh, you know, I haven't really been a Boy Scout and living it inauthentically, trying to get away with uh, a state of being where uh, I was trying to compensate for a, a perception of a lack of love within myself. And because I didn't fully love myself and I wasn't able to be real in the relationship that I was with, that I was in, I wasn't able to state what so. I wasn't able to share what my feelings were, sometimes which... I was afraid of triggering my partner or setting her off or, or fears of rejection. What we do is we hold back how we truly feel. And what that does is that it creates this split in our psyche. And it forces us to try to seek other places where we could finally be ourselves and finally be real. And sometimes that happens when we're at work or we're in, you know, in our social setting and we encounter somebody else and then we form a connection outside of the love bond that we have in our relationship. And so infidelity ensues. And you know how it goes. It's the office romance. It's you, you name it. And if you, you haven't been in a 10, 20, 30-year relationship and not had to deal with the concept of infidelity. In fact, we're talking 80% of people. I don't know what the research is. I don't have the specific data. But I, I've, I've heard somewhere along the lines of, 80% of people within long-term committed relationships have strayed and, 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 and partnered up or had sexual uh, relationships, if not emotional affairs, uh, with other people. And so this is what's so. This is what happens. However, interesting things happen when we make up stories about it, and it gets extremely complicated. And I didn't think that I would ever get to the point where I'd actually doing a Facebook Live broadcast about this, but I've been seeing client after client come in with anxiety, with depression, with digestive problems, with hormonal issues, with reproductive issues. And part of the work I do, if you haven't, if you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Nima Romani. I'm trained as a chiropractor, worked 16 years, helping sick people get well and helping stressed 
and stuck and sick folks just transform just with the work that I do, removing stress from the nervous system. But if you've been a, a hairstylist or uh, you know you've worked as a bartender, even you get to hear, and you know chiropractors, even we get to hear the stories of all of these people. And when I unravel them, we see stories of guilt, of infidelity, of cheating, of inauthenticity. And I've noticed what an impact that these lies and inauthenticities have had in, in people's health. So I, I've, you know, the program that I, I, I created, I've created this program called Powerfully Aligned as kind of like a pun on my chiropractic back Background in helping people get real, authentic, and live with integrity, and 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 to live according to a mission that's truly theirs, clearing their pasts and getting through relationship and career limbo. So people who are stuck in career and relationship limbo, and they have a health problem that's causing them to get stuck. I have a specialty in helping people get unstuck, become powerfully aligned, and then know exactly what their next step would be. Like Diani, for example, you're, you're living proof of it, um, stuck in her relationship and all that. We've cleared all of these stories. All of a sudden, there's harmony within her relationship dynamics, within her family, and then now she's no longer stuck. She now knows exactly what's her next move and is now enrolled in a nursing program. So I want to give you a thumbs up and a shout out, Dee, uh, for, for the work that you've done in the program and, and how far you've come getting unstuck and getting real and taking off that mask and telling the truth. Because there's a serious impact that you will live if you don't tell the truth. So I'm going to give you a couple case studies. Now, Heather was a, a client of mine. Of course, Heather, I'm not... I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not telling you the the, the real name. She uh, came to me with paralyzing anxiety after one year, for one year duration. And what triggered it? It was her uh, surgery for her hysterectomy. And what uh, she didn't tell me before I enrolled her into the program was that she was having an affair for about seven years. So soon, so here's what happens. Her and her husband are having a challenging time as it happens in relationships. And without the tools to be able to get real, she caught her husband um, uh, watching porn. Okay. He's got some fetish. She's a white woman. She's got, he's got some fetish with Asians based on his past uh, story of, of his, of his uh, tour back in, in Korea. So he's got this fetish with Asians. She sees him, um, you know, catches him, you know, checking out this porn pornography and all of a sudden she makes it mean as many women do when they catch their men have in pornography she makes it mean that she's not good enough it's not necessarily true it's not necessarily true but when a woman sees her husband doing that she she often oftentimes she'll turn around and make it mean that she's not good enough so this feeling of unworthiness, this feeling of I'm not good enough forces her instead of talking about it and really getting, you know, having the tools to be able to communicate, she takes it in and then goes and phones up her and reconnects with her high school sweetheart and begins a seven year long affair. And throughout very soon after that affair, she starts developing weird, wild, wacky, um, reproductive organ symptoms. So bleeding and endometriosis, all of this stuff happens mysteriously after she starts lying about her, her life. So she creates this double life. And as a result of this double life, she starts to get sick and these reproductive system organs, uh, reproductive uh, organ um, uh, problems and fast forward seven years, it gets worse, 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 and it becomes extremely excruciatingly painful during sex, and, and it destroys her life. Finally, she gets her doctor, tried medication, and then they decide we're going to do a hysterectomy. She gets a hysterectomy, boom, wakes up, and then right afterwards, now the hysterectomy, the body is basically, in essence, trying to get her to be real with the symptoms. She says, screw it. I'm going to keep covering it up and let me just have surgery. The surgery comes. Now there are no symptoms and the body turns around and gives her anxiety. Now she can't run because now there's no problems with the reproductive system anymore to dispel all that energy from all of the lies and the myths and the delusions. All of a sudden, hey, Shmila, all of a sudden, 
wow, boom, now she's got paralyzing anxiety. We do our first session yesterday and lo and behold, she discovers that the anxiety over the past year forced her to tell the truth, break it off with that other guy and go all in with her relationship. In other words, the anxiety was forcing her into getting real, taking off the mask. And she doesn't know why she's got it and she figured out why she's got it. And now she's taking action. She's coming clean with her husband. She's getting real, taking off the mask. And this is the beginning of her anxiety transformation. Anxiety is a distraction from a lie. And if you're lying in your relationship, if you're not being real, and I'm not here to judge you because I did it myself. I, 41 years old, I've been through marriage and a divorce, been through several relationships after I know what it's like to not be telling the truth. I know what it's like to want to hide what's going on on your text message and not want the other person to find out. That's called anxiety. Anxiety is a distraction from a lie. And Heather is now on the road to recovery and transforming her anxiety because she decided that she's going to take it on, take off the mask and get real. The second person is Kelly. Kelly. Hey, what's up? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. So Kelly, I'm going to say Kelly, it's not her real name, um, wa got married at the age of 17 and was kind of arranged and wasn't really in love with her husband. And after a few kids, discovered that there wasn't real emotional connection. Um, hey, Jesse, what's up? Grateful for you too. Hopefully this brings you some value. So she was not really connected with her husband, uh, wasn't having a real connection. He was off doing his own thing. She didn't know how to communicate and be real because she wanted to be a good girl. She's the pastor's daughter and all of a sudden has uh, an affair with another guy a couple times or once or whatever. The guilt of that and the guilt of not telling her young children and the guilt of the realization that she wasn't really in love with this guy, 30 years of medication to cover the anxiety that was there as a distraction from the lie, all right, in the midst of separation. God bless you, my dear. I know it's not a fun time. I've been there, so uh, make sure you reach out if you're ready to ready to actually become powerfully aligned. You're ready to reach out and do that. We're, we're willing to help. I mean, there's powerful things that you can do. Diani, tell her. Jesse, you were in the midst of a separation. Uh, sorry, uh, Diani, you were in the midst of a separation, and. Let Jesse know exactly how powerful the potential is if she can get real and learn the tools. So Kelly, all of a sudden, came to me 30 years of, of medications, and we got to work. And over the last few months, she is now medication-free. But guess what? It didn't happen without effort. You can try all the crystals and the hypnotherapy therapy and the cognitive behavioral approach, but it doesn't work because it does not transform the lie. The distraction from the lie is anxiety, depression, and all sorts of health problems. <laughs> God bless you guys. Shamila, jump in. Diani, God, I love my clients. You guys are amazing. You guys uh, inspire me for the work that you guys are doing. I, I sometimes tell Amanda, you know, tearfully how proud I am of, of the work that you guys are doing and what you guys are taking on. Because it's not easy. What I'm sharing with you isn't the isn't uh, rosy, it isn't positive and happy, it's actually the truth. And what's available to you on the other side is, is freedom and power when you have ha put yourself in a state of victimhood because you're afraid to actually learn how to have an honest communication with somebody and get vulnerable and real. These are skills that we unfortunately don't learn in school, but if we don't master, it negatively impacts our health. And Kelly's health was misery absolute misery. She didn't have a voice covering and hiding herself in, in her, in her uh, home. And finally, now she's free. She's liberated. And she is now working towards teaching other people how to not take medication and actually tell the truth about their lives. So God bless her. Carl is another client that I had who was living a double life for 11 years. He had one girlfriend and another one, two separate ones. And half the time lived with her, half the time lived. I don't know how he did it, but imagine living that kind of a double life. Guess what? He started getting inflammatory bowel disorder and completely he's just going from one doctor to another. What pill can solve a problem 
created by being a fucking liar in towards yourself and towards another human being. It doesn't exist. See, I want, uh, I dream of a world where we start looking at our symptoms as feedback rather than something that's wrong with us. That the feedback that your body inherently knows how to be healthy. There is this intelligence within the body. But when we become disconnected, when we become disconnected from the truth, Daniela, love you too. Can't wait to come to your wedding. Daniela is getting married to one of my best friends. Your wedding's coming up in a little bit and I uh, can't wait. But what, what this is teaching you, basically, if you are not able to get real and tell the truth and be authentic in your life, your body is designed to break down in, 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 in revolt of the lies that you're telling. See, your highest version of you, and I can tell you this, not because I'm a Boy Scout, because I've lived it too, and my life basically fell apart because I didn't have integrity. I wasn't living in integrity. And so when I learn how to be real and be authentic with myself, okay, and be congruent and be real, when I learn how to do that, because it's not a skill that you just automatically learn. It's actually an incredible journey, and it's painful. And it's hard and it's scary. All of the things that I put my clients through, it's not easy. It's not just a cakewalk. It's not like some therapy. It's not like anything else you've ever done. It's actually real. There is transformation that happens when you do the work and you have the right guide pushing you to the greatest version of yourself to tell the truth and take off the mask. And as a result, what happens is, in Carl's case, he started to heal when he owned up. Was it an easy couple months for him to get real? Hell no. But then his health came back. And the last uh, uh, example I want to give you was Jill. Jill is Jill uh, is uh, married, and she was having a seven-year affair with this other guy. And basically, here's the reason why. Maybe you could relate. She wasn't able to be real in her marriage. She was afraid of pissing him off. She basically would say things like, you know, I, I, I'm afraid of saying anything to you to trigger you and piss you off because here's what happens. When our partners are upset with us, we take it as rejection. It triggers our dark passenger and we just feel we can't love ourselves. And so we go on this downward spiral because we getting, we perceive rejection. We don't allow our, we don't get real and because, and we don't allow our partners to dump on us because we feel hurt by the words that they say instead of just holding space for them to really express and dump and be real. And so this whole spiral of inauthenticity forced her to seek out realness in somebody else where she didn't subordinate to this other guy's opinion. So she could say whatever the fuck she wanted and, and she could be herself in that dynamic. And so she created this seven year fantasy where she could be herself only because she hadn't learned the skills and how to be real in her marriage. And as a result, She's taking anxiety medications to compensate for those inauthenticities. And my friends, she is on the path of reducing those medications with the help of her doctor because she's learning how to get real and tell the truth and identify her own triggers and tell and allow her husband to be real as well. See, these skills aren't automatic. They're not easy. They're not for the faint of heart, but for the, they're, they're for the people that actually want to get real and to tell the truth. Consider if you have a health problem. Consider if you're dealing with paralyzing anxiety and panic attacks. Consider that there's a reason for it and that your body's not forsaking you and that you're not sick and you're not having this stupid chemical imbalance that justifies taking medications. That's all a bunch of bullshit that you can control the medic, you can control the uh, pharmacy within your, the chemistry within your own body and mind by living aligned with with congruent uh, rituals, by shifting your thoughts and perceptions and stories that you've been telling. That whole I'm not good enough story can turn around and you learn how to dance with your dark passenger. And then you can learn how to be authentic and real in communication with other human beings, especially those in your family, so that you can have a real relationship. What opens up? What becomes possible if you take away this fear of judgment and rejection from your partner, you're able to take off the mask and get real. What opens up is magic. What opens up is a tremendous sense of power and freedom and a tremendous sense of self-expression and 
here's the side byproduct of it. You get your health back. You get your health back. So I want to invite those of you. Um, hold on one second. Um, slash apply. I want to invite those of you who actually are ready and are recognizing that their lies are the cause of their anxiety. The lies are the cause of their depression and their health problems and their hormonal issues and their adrenal fatigue and all of these symptoms that they're trying to say, what do I take for this? You take a big dose of the truth is what you take. And no matter what you do as far as nutrition goes, that's very important. But without taking off the mask, changing the story, restoring integrity, and then telling the truth, you don't have a hope in hell of having an amazing life. I decided long ago that I really wanted to dedicate my life to serving people, serving my family, and, and, and getting real and, and forming really strong connections with people. And that involved taking off the mask and being a genuine human being. God knows I, I spent 40 years trying to look good and be right, and it really didn't get me too much, too far. It got me to a certain distance, but it really didn't get me into connection. And so I've dedicated my life now to helping people take off the mask and get real. And I only want to talk to those. If you want to apply to actually fill out the form, schedule a time. It's a free conversation. And I want you to tell me what has been going on. What are the, uh, what are the things that you feel are holding you back? What's stopping you? Where's your dark passenger coming from? And from that conversation, we'll form a strategy. And if I can take you on and really help you clear this problem and you're actually committed, then you can jump all in and we can do that. But if not, I will be able to help point you in another direction. Those of you who've worked with me, Dan, uh, Diani and Shamila, please speak up. Let them know exactly um, what, what it's been like for you um, to, to transform this and how important is this? Your health, your health the, the health of your families are at stake by you not taking this on. And you can run and you can hide and you can keep downward spiraling and that'll only end up in delaying the inevitable catastrophe of health problems, of cancer diagnosis. Do you really want to wait for a cancer diagnosis before you start getting real? That's unfortunately when most people start. They get cancer and then all of a sudden they say, okay, now it's time to start getting real and tell the truth. Why wait for a cancer diagnosis? Brother, sister, reach out. I'm here for you, and I'd love to have a chat to see if you are ready to jump all in to get real and tell the truth and learn how to be a genuine human being, um, which is not perfect, doesn't try to make out to be themselves, to be better than others. I am a work in progress. I am constantly doing the work. I constantly falter. I fall off the horse. I struggle. I jump back on, and I'm teaching a group of dedicated, committed badasses to doing the same because... Um, they can then be better for their friends, for their family, for their children. So if there are any questions, uh, please reach out. If there's a question, please ask. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure. I want to start by, you know, end by, by with such gratitude. Gratitude for the clients that have, uh, have entrusted me with helping them to, 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 to find themselves. Um, relief from crushing anxiety and panic attacks. Shamila, you... You have, uh, you've slain this dragon, going from a state where you had no possibility of even reaching out to f friends and family members that you've been disconnected with for so long because of the stories of victimhood. That woman, Shamila, has stepped up and inspired me so much to taking on, becoming this warrior, to taking off the mask, getting vulnerable and changing her story so that her kids could actually benefit from it. And this is big is that who would you have to become in order for you to heal? Who would you have to become in order for you to get exactly the life that you want, the relationship that you want? Who would you have to become? Message me privately. Let me know who you would love to become, and I would love to have a chat with you to see if that's possible for you. It's a 20, 30-minute call to see to, when I have some questions, some qualifying questions to see who possibly is not helpful uh, like who has no hope who wants to stay stuck in their story and victimhood and who's ready to take it on hopefully this has been useful for you guys 
the reason why I'm doing this is because I've, I've seen too many people whose health and lives are destroyed because of their inability to get real. And I really would love to, to show this with people. Um, I, I, I imagine thousands of people learning these tools so that they can then be leaders for others. So I'm willing to take that on if that's something that you're willing to do. Please send, that, send me a private message. Reach out. There's a couple spots left if you can check on the schedule by by that little link right there, bepowerfullyaligned.com slash apply. Check in the scheduler. There's a few spots left over the next couple of days um, to see uh, what's going on. There's also a form that you fill out and let me know. Uh, let me know and uh, how I can serve you and if this is something that, that you are ready to take on. If it's not and you wanna continue, pay attention to the symptoms. Every time you get the anxiety or the panic attacks or whatever, just realize it's a distraction for the lie reach out and we're here for you. God bless you, thank you for your time. Please share this with somebody that you know who needs it or tag them and God bless you. Karen, thanks for tuning in each time. I look forward to seeing you when I come to Brisbane in September. Take care, bye-bye.